Hello and welcome to another video on this channel. This time we are out in the forest taking some photographs. It's cold, it's wet, it's miserable, but it's also very beautiful because through the rain, through all the moisture in the air, there's now fog here and yeah, it's just beautiful. I can take photos in every direction. And yeah, if you remember a few months ago, I did a video which was called, it's not all about the photos. And I was in this exact forest and, and now it's starting to, rain very heavily but I was in this exact forest and I didn't take one picture. Today it's different. We have rain, we have fog and as I said I can take photos in every direction. And yeah this video will be very short because I want to continue to take photos but I just want to show you one trick, one technique I'm using with the R5 now but also some other brands have this feature which is called focus stacking or automatic focus stacking. And yeah, I want to show you how I use it. So just after I recorded the intro, it began chucking it down. I couldn't record anymore. So I just stood beneath my umbrella and yeah, waited for the rain to stop, which it now did. So what snow dripping from the leaves is just some uh, light drizzle. So it's fine to record a video. I mean, the R5, it's fine in the rain but if it's just raining you have to constantly wipe the filter and yeah that's just a pain so I waited a bit and now I want to show you how I use the bracketing feature of the R5 and you can also use it if you don't have the R5 I think even the RP and also Sony's I think and Nikon's have this feature and it's very nice so first of all uh, one thing to note is if you activate bracketing at least for the R5 it seems to use the electronic shutter so it's very fast what this also means is likely it's just 12-bit raw files so I'm not yet sure if I'll notice it but it could be that I lose a bit of quality that's why I first employ my typical workflow so I have a scene like this I'm quite low and what I can do is I shoot at ISO 100 to get the best quality and also I do focus taking by just as you can see here tapping on the screen taking a photo then taking another photo first tapping on the screen in the middle taking another photo but this takes time and at ISO 100 that's quite okay I have f9 so I don't need many focus brackets but now we also have wind so the leaves are shaking also in the foreground those little yeah, leaves here or ferns which I had in some of the other photos might also be shaking and uh, I have to go to ISO 800 and even then um, yeah the exposure times might be too long still so I go to f 5.6 or something which now means I have to take much more focus brackets and for this 
the feature of the R5 and maybe other cameras comes in quite handy. So what I can show you here, hopefully, there's a feature called focus bracketing. I hope you can see it. And here this focus increment, this tells you how many focus uh, or shots are taken. So I have it too narrow, so it will take many shots. This number of shots just increase it to a high number. Uh, the camera will stop once it went through the complete range of the lens. And then, yeah, you just enable it. Uh, down here, the exposure smoothing, I don't have an enable. I shoot raw, I do all the adjustments of the exposure um, afterwards. But yeah, that's basically the settings. So I have it enabled now. Um, I can now go back here. Now I just, if you can see, select the focus point very close, the closest one to the camera. And now you can also see I have ISO 800 f5.6, so 1 25th of a second. So that's a very short exposure time. And now what I do, I just click and yeah, the camera now takes many photos. So it goes through the complete range incrementing the focus just a bit between each shot and yeah it stops somewhere at infinity which is all out of focus for this lens but yeah really if you just increase the number of shots you get uh, the complete range and yeah then I can be sure to have everything at a short exposure time and I can just fill those in and yeah the low ISO shots I'll use those for most of the image so trying to get already the best out of the shot, but then I take a complete range at ISO 800, open aperture just to have everything sharp in case there's movement. And before I always had to repeat it also manually and yeah, with a, a 5.6 or even a more open aperture, it's really a pain to do it manually, even with a touch screen. So that's a nice feature and I'll also check um, yeah, how the files come out if I notice something by losing two bits of uh, color depth but yeah a nice feature I wanted to show you and now I have to focus on taking more photos because just look at that it's incredible I'm here now for four hours one of those hours was completely wasted by rain but now it's just beautiful and I don't think it will stop soon so um, seems the fox just sticking around for the whole day so I have one more battery left so already drained one and a half so really taking lots of photos also videos and enough talk now heading back to taking some photos. <laughs>